You too. Right, folks. We're gonna open this box, this little dinky one right here. You may be expecting the FMS part. You might even be expecting exactly what's inside of it because you've seen the thumbnail. But if you didn't look at the thumbnail, then get ready to be excited. <laughs> Ooh, what do we have here? We have the Dissolve Rafal by FMS in the 80 millimeter EDF. Amazing. So we're gonna open this up now. You may be thinking to yourself, but Brian, you already did that plane. Yes, we did. But we did it before the Reflex V2 and we did it with Astriax and Safe, which is fine. And I struggled to fly it because I just, I don't know, I think I was flying it wrong. And since we recently did the 64 millimeter version of the Rafal, I'm actually quite excited to reinvestigate this. I think I'm gonna have better luck with it and I think I'm gonna enjoy it better. But just keep in mind, this is a big plane. It's very detailed, it's expensive, and it does take an expensive battery. So we're gonna talk about that as we go through the build. So let's get right into it. If you wanna look at specs, I'm in all the wrong languages here. So I'm gonna flip over, show you the other sides of the boxes. And it looks like we have English somewhere. Oh, here it is. Okay, 3280, 2100 KV, Platinum Edition in runner motor with high performance, 100 amp ESC, good Lord, that's big. The Delta Wing, this, these have active canards, so the canards actually do work, which is pretty cool. Uh, functional navigation lights, which is cool, and landing lights, so when the nose gear goes down, there's very bright lights to turn on, and very good landing gear, and water-based vibrant trims. What? Is that different? What are they so. talking about? Oh, I think they're saying that they put on water-based decals, so they're, they're not vinyl stickers, so they must be lighter. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out what it looks like. But definitely, this is a cool plane, and we're gonna get right to it right now. So opening it up, notice a little water damage from shipping. That's kind of a bummer. Oh. Hope it's not damaged inside, I kind of doubt it. It looks like it just kind of was on the surface there. Okay, so I can see the nose, but I don't have any work to push, so I'm gonna try going this way. Man, having trouble. All right, so this is a big package. And so if you guys order this through our links in the video description below, you'll be helping to support our channel, our family, of course, and our efforts on YouTube. So we hope that you'll consider doing that if we're able to help you out a little bit through this build process. Doesn't cost you any extra, but we do make small commissions uh, from any sort of that activity, which is part of how we fund our channel, like I said, and it's probably the bigger part of the channel funding. We get a little bit from ad revenue on YouTube, um, but it is kind of hard to depend on because you never really know what YouTube is going to throw at you. And after having done this YouTube thing for about eight years, a little over eight years, we have learned that ad revenue is, is very kind of crappy. So anyway, that's, that's basically the way it is. So the way you can help support us is if you want to buy these planes, if you're thinking about buying these planes anyway, watch the video, find out if you like it, but don't just buy it to support us. Buy what you like to support us and you can buy we review like pretty much everything. So, all right, without further ado, we're gonna continue on this, chopping things open. I do love when I see a manual that's not folded. We like manuals that are flat and look how thick that thing is. Ooh. Yeah. Now, don't be, don't be scared by the thick manual. This is in multiple languages. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. FMS does a really nice job on their manuals. I think only second, second to maybe like E-Flight, they mm -hmm. do a pretty good job on their manuals. And the one thing I like about the E-Flight manuals that's better than these is the simple fact that you have bind and fly. Because they're bind and fly, you don't have that same level of complexity on setup. But because these are plug and flies, FMS does a good job of actually telling you what needs to be plugged in where. And that's what we have right here. So there's that. And then over here. So this is the controller, okay? Now, in our case, we haven't ever done this with the Reflex V2, but we have done it with Safe and AS3X through, I believe at the time we were using AR637T. I don't think we did an 8230. It's been quite a while since yeah. we did that one. So what we're gonna use today, I believe this is enough channels to get us by. If it's not, we'll rediscuss. This is the AR8020T, okay? So that's gonna give us battery pack telemetry through this feed which we have to actually put in on the battery lead and plug into this port here that says bat or volt, 
right there. That's gonna give us our flight pack voltage for telemetry, which to me is the most important telemetry feature you need. But then there's also going to be stabilization provided by the reflex and also auto leveling if you choose to use it. Now, as you guys know, I don't generally use auto leveling, but it is a very nice feature to have, especially on a plane that's really complicated. And if you're new or just returning to the hobby, it may be quite helpful. So as you can see, we got some ordnance. We'll just pull things out as we go. This is gonna be unboxed, but we're gonna start talking about the build and radio setup as we go. So obviously those channels should get us what we need because the emulation of a six channel plane is what we usually experience on reflex, okay? Or vector if it's uh, an arrows. Okay, so we have an inboard flap, which is technically not a flap on this because it's a delta wing. Then we have an outboard aileron. Then we have this, which actually contains LEDs. If you look close here, you can see there is a forward facing LED and the forward facing LED even has a heat sink in it. So it's quite bright, okay? And then the missile goes on here and then this shines up and down, which is good. But just to be clear, very good decals, very good match on color, but make sure you hit those edges if they're peeling up. Mine was just up a little bit, but it wasn't peeling like some peel it just needs to be pressed down. Okay, sometimes when we get these planes and they're peeling up, they're peeling up because they have lost the adhesive nature of the edge of the decal. That one actually stuck back down. Which we're gonna point out stuff like that on Brian Phillips RC, because that's what we do. We work with these companies, we wanna have a good relationship with them, but at the same time, we are here to serve you as viewers and not necessarily the manufacturers. I mean, of course it goes hand in hand. If we didn't take care of the manufacturers, then they wouldn't send us stuff. And if we didn't send stuff, then we wouldn't take care of you guys by showing you what we have to offer. So we have a quick disconnect, which is really nice. I don't remember if the one we did last time did. I'm pretty sure it did because it's not been all that terribly long ago. So let's lay these out. Obviously very, very nice looking plane. Oh, and just as, a, as an aside, I wanna just show you real quick before we get any further. Look how much bigger this is, okay? Doesn't look that much bigger over there. <laughs> but it's going to end up being a lot bigger plane because a lot of the, a lot of the wing is actually part of the airplane. So as you can see, we're just going to set this out here and just keep, keep working through. So we have a huge carbon fiber spar here. As you can see, it's hollow, but it's thick. See how thick that is. Okay. So that's big. And yes, these things are incredibly strong. Obviously, if you break that, you screwed something up or it crashed badly. Uh, don't miss what's in this pocket. I believe that's the USB-A to USB-C cable that we have been getting. And I could be mistaken. But yeah, USB-A to USB-C. If you're not familiar with what that is, USB-A is like that. USB-C is like that. Okay. So that's so you can reprogram the reflex should you need to update firmware. We haven't ever updated firmware on a reflex and we hope to not have to do that. Okay, so just cutting tape here. Looks like this box is in two halves. Okay, now we are just folding these shut. And you may also notice me in our videos, I always fold this stuff shut. The reason I do that is because we put our foam in piles and there's a lot of it. Sometimes when you fold them open like that, instead of pulling straight up, you'll damage stuff. So I, I want to encourage you to double check before you do that. Okay, amazing. Looks totally glorious. This thing is huge and beautiful. So we're going to start with the least exciting, which would be the nut and bolt sack. Would you hold my nut and bolt sack, please? Mm -hmm, sure. Okay. And then obviously we have the tip. Now the tip is magnetically attached on this as opposed to clip-on style over here. But ironically... Look how super similar they look. That's crazy. Isn't that weird? Yeah. It just means that it's actually a shorter portion of the nose. Mm. So, but it's ironic that it looks so similar. Now, I just also want to point out how detailed the ordnance packs are on these. That is super cool. And make no mistake, these things are so well done. They're so smooth and feel how light that is. It's like nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, nothing as in ordnance that is a very weighty thing to say, haha, <laughs> pun intended, because even though they're light, they still have a lot of drag. So you need to be keeping that in mind 
when you're considering whether or not you want to put ordnance on your aircraft. Now, we usually fly with ordnance if ordnance is included with an aircraft at least once, but I almost always immediately tear it off, as you can see over here, case in point. Yep. This is the central, okay? So it would have been really nice if we would have had a centrally located tank on that one because the hand launch capability, because that one, a lot of people are flying these without landing gear. And I gotta say, there's nothing in the middle. Okay, look how smooth it is. If you wanna hand launch that, it's gonna be a, a tricky hand launch. So we still do have plans to do a second thoughts on this where we'll go ahead and do some hand launch stuff for you. So if you're wanting to see how we do it, you can just stay tuned, we'll have that shortly. Okay, now vertical stabilizer and rudder. Some people have said they don't like this decal pack, but I just think it's really cool. I actually prefer that one, but I think this one's very cool. And you know why I like this one? Because it is super high visibility. Mm -hmm. Now one complaint, if I remember right, was the distinction between the top and the bottom was either really good or really bad. And I cannot remember my conclusion. So we'll just leave that there. And absolutely gorgeous. I'm just gonna leave that for now. We've got the canards here. These are super easy to put on. There's a singular set screw here or here. That's part of a nut zert that's molded into this molded plastic here, which helps to dissipate the load. There's also a carbon fiber spar. It's a square tube. This is a little teeny bit of flex on it, but this is not gonna be a weak spot because this is very firm and very strong, but also, cam crew, light. Very light. Very light. So we'll leave those there. All right, so now we have some missiles over here. All right, so this is uh, really detailed, very simple. I like that it's simple. I like that it's simple, but detailed and clean. Clean application of decals. Not a bunch of overlap. Bad match on the color here though. I don't know if that's intentional. Maybe it's supposed to be a different color. Let's compare to these missiles. These missiles over here are super similar. It looks like they just kind of did some detailing on there. Not like they're trying to make the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So I do like that these missiles seem to be the right size for the aircraft. And that's pretty cool. So I am gonna go ahead and, no, I'm not gonna put them on yet. Just for the simple fact that I believe I'm gonna have to press hard to get alignment on these two points. You can see there's a plastic receiver here and here. And then there's a pass through bolt mechanism that actually holds that on. So this is gonna bolt together, which is really nice. We did have to do some gluing on this, didn't we? We had to glue the canards on and vertical stabilizer. And to be perfectly frank, I think that was a big miss on FMS for that one because it's, it's a great platform and there's no reason. Okay, now look at this. I wanna show you something, come around. Guys, I don't normally show you guys issues with packaging, but I just wanna point out one detail here that's a, that's a bit of an, see this? See how it slides forward and back? Look at that. Oh. It's dug into the foam and then look, it's dug into the foam back here, okay? So I'm gonna be looking for damage, but just be careful when you lift it, you have to get it free of that so you can pull it up and out. Now something I missed, oh man, that is really gorgeous. Something I missed, okay, and I just gotta point out this detail before I forget to point it out. Look at that cool plastic de detail underneath there. Here? See that? That is so neat. I don't even know what the heck it does. If somebody knows what that's supposed to be, that is super cool. It looks like a heat sink or like a heat shield that would stop afterburners from melting the frame of the aircraft in a real application. Of course, these are EDFs or EDF in this case. It's an 80 millimeter EDF. This thing is definitely a powerhouse, but it is a power sucker. So just be aware of it. Very gorgeous. Love the detailing on this thing. Looks amazing. Here's of course where the canards are gonna go. And then let's pop open the canopy once you get a pass by. Super detailed instrument cluster. Love the pilot, love the scale, love the size, love the quick release. Opens without any effort at all. Very good fit, that's nice. We don't always see that. Also these canard protections, that's so that the linkage on the controls don't get interfered with your battery. And then if you point the camera back here, you can show them where the reflex is sitting. So it's definitely in a good spot. That's gonna be a lot easier than some of the other planes that we've dealt with in the past, uh, just because you always have to get the center of gravity just so on EDF jets. And our experience so far has been, they need to basically fly what would be arguably tail heavy 
to be a comfortable flight because you need to be able to flare. Now this plane does high alpha probably better than most. It does have some big retracts and they're very gorgeous. And I tell you what, when you see a jet flying by and the gear down, it just really is a, an undermining effect to it. Whereas with virtually any other type of airplane, it's not really a big deal. But I just feel like with EDF jets, especially Warbird style jets, landing gear down, unless you're doing a dirty pass, just it's off-putting to me. So even though I can sit and watch a million Warbirds with their landing gear down, it doesn't bother me. But as soon as you get into EDF jets, I've always thought it was kind of off-putting. So I love the fact that we're gonna have a clean uh, silhouette when we're going by. Okay, empty, right? Mm -hmm. Let's Nothing flip this thing shut and see if we can double check. Okay, so everything's emptied out. So what we'll do is we'll take a sec, get cleaned up and come right back to do the build. All right, so we're gonna start with canards and they use a little teeny set screw like this. And that set screw is driven with not a two millimeter camera crew with a 1.5 millimeter. The bolts were two millimeter. I didn't check that. <laughs> 1.5 millimeter set screw. There's three of them provided in the bag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start them here where it's convenient. This is actually a super easy build. But if I remember right, we did some weird stuff on the radio setup last time that was not really helpful. Mm. And so this time we're just gonna do it the normal way because yeah. I want it to be easy. Okay. Now, I don't know as it pertains to how this, there is a, there's a flat here, okay? So if you wanna kinda shoot an angle there so they can see there's a flat. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you have to worry about this not lining up, but what I do have to do is we, I think we had a hard time with these, um, with our plane stand for this plane because the nature of its shape. So maybe we'll just like set it here on top of these two chairs. Okay. From the magic home. Mm -hmm. com. <laughs> so shameless plug. We're just going to try this here so you guys can see what we're doing. Cause I could potentially do it upside down, but I want you to be able to see. So you can definitely feel when you hit that special spot. Isn't that true? Yes, for sure. What if you miss the special spot? You'll know. It will not feel right. Okay. So what you're saying is just listen to the instruction to know when you hit the special spot yes. and then everything will be fine. Yep. And there'll be no confusion. And then you can <laughs> tighten it in there. <laughs> okay. I'll remember that when I do the other side. Are you hitting canard. the special spot? Yeah. I mean, you got to stick it in pretty far. Okay. It's got like really deep penetration here. Mm -hmm. Goodness gracious. Oh, the only problem is I gotta be honest. It does feel like it's slipping a little bit. Maybe this, are these maybe standard? No, No. there's no way these are standard. No okay, so I'm gonna do something smart. I'm gonna hold this here. Okay. And I'm gonna actually run this in further first. Are you looking down the hole? I am, I know you probably can't see, but I'm gonna tell you when I see it and then I'll back it off just a hair. Okay, you guys see that in there? You guys know the feeling when you get it in there and you turn and then it pops past the position you want it, it's like awkward. Then you gotta like back off a little bit. Be careful that doesn't slide off, please. I know. Okay, I'm gonna slide this on. Okay, and I gotta get over that edge. It's definitely not right yet. Ooh, that's not right. I think you went in too far. I just gotta back it out a little bit. Yep, okay, I can see that it cleared now. Okay, well, there it is. Better. See, that's so much further, like, <laughs> That looks so much more correct. Yeah, I don't think you missed I don't think I, think I got deep enough. Here. Yeah. Although I gotta say, it's it's popping. That's not good. Okay, so trade me sides, please. I'm gonna actually get a different tool for this. I normally don't have to do this, but this um this tool's making me nervous. It's like it's not actually making a full purchase. Mm. And so, oh yeah, that's right. I have this crazy flywing one that came in another kit. And look at those, they're super similar. But this one, this is the flight test makes these too. They sell them, they rebrand them. Hold this cam crew. Mm -hmm. Watch this, I bet it works perfect the first time. Oh yeah, biting like crazy. <laughs> Get in there, what are you doing? There it is. Now I found the special spot. See, sometimes the first time. 
It's a little bit stiff. Yep. So, but guys, listen, I'm serious about this. I got this tool from some random build. Was it? But, but maybe it was in like the J65 or something. No, I'm, was that in a box of like Tom stuff? No, oh. no. It came with a plane? No, no, this came with a plane. Oh. But listen, what I'm trying to say is it's very unusual. Okay, now we're gonna transport this. You can go back over there. I'll I just, I got okay. it. I got a camera crew. I want to fall. It's okay, it's okay. We don't both have to love it. <laughs> we had a flight test screwdriver that looked just like this. And it's one of the best drivers I've ever had. And this brand has been amazing. One of our subscribers, Tom, sent us this kit. And we have been almost exclusively using it mm -hmm. for probably two years. Several years. Maybe more. And I love them, but there is that certain time where you get a driver that feels like you're going and it pops past when you get it tight. So it's like, ah, did I actually get good purchase? So I'm gonna just put that there for now. Now, okay, continuing on. The canards are attached, thank goodness. Um, we're gonna put the wings on next just because, you know what, let's put vertical stabilizer next because it's gonna be easier to reach on the edge of the table. Okay. Now that we have it flat on its belly like this, it should be pretty easy. They have gone through and taped this so it doesn't fall in, which is nice, okay? So I'm gonna just be very mindful not to lose it. Okay, this is just some tape. I'll just stick that right there. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Leave that there, and then I'm gonna grab the rudder. Okay, so just so you guys know, because you can't see very good, the brown is toward my belly, so just line up color for color. That's not a very long cable. No, it's really not, and I kind of almost need you to help me, but then at the same time, I know you're holding the camera, so I guess I'm on my own. Nah, okay. I'll get it. There we go, got it. And to be honest, I, I would normally gripe about that being short, but it's like really kind of nice when you're done because it's a lot easier. Yeah. And do they really need to label it rudder? I, if you need that label, you're in the wrong hobby. But they probably have a million of them just sitting on the shelf for every plane, right? And they're all just pre-labeled? Yeah, I know, but it's, what, is that the aileron? Well. I suppose you could think it's big enough. It's almost the same size as the wing. If you think it's the aileron, you're in the wrong hobby. But. By the way, everybody starts, everybody makes a mistake once in a while. Okay, so you see this? Mm -hmm. Show the people what I'm struggling with. Dur, dur, dur. Can't get it all the way over. Oh. So I'm gonna have to take this extension cord and just pull it. Yep, there, it's, it was good. No problem at all, I had plenty of room to slack it. And then you have to go back far enough that I can put this down and under, okay? Down and under, mate. Stuck it right in there where it wanted to be. Okay, I'm gonna take this screwdriver here. Just kind of straighten that out. Now on the other side, you guys can't see it right now, but I'm lining up the servo cable here so it falls into this channel nicely, okay? Again, this is not like rocket science, except if it was technically, it kind of looks a little bit like a rocket, okay? Down and in. Yep. Sweet. Okay, so we're gonna have to apply a little bit of pressure here to get that to line up. And now we need the longest set of screws in the yes. bags. There's two and one spare. Mm -hmm. That's what you've come to find with most of these manufacturers. They give you one spare of the bigger hardware. Unless, of course, they only have one needed and then they only give you one which I don't really understand the rationalization for spares, but only spares for some. Like there's some magical way, like they won't forget one, but they might forget one out of five or four. Right. So continuing on, okay, nice and tight fit, very good. easy. Wish it was always that smooth. Mm -hmm. Okay, now just applying Almost no pressure, just kind of holding my hand here. Now light pressure, too much. Now I'm having a bit of an alignment issue, so I'm not sure if I need to rock it, but you can feel it's, it's not quite there. It's getting pressure early. So trick of the day, go into your kitchen, uh, squeeze a little bit of dish detergent onto the tip of your, you know, just get the tip lubed up. Yeah. 
And before you ram it in, you just uh, lube the tip and just kind of work it. If it makes that squeaking sound when you put it in. If it squeaks, you did something it's, wrong. Yeah. By the way, those canards, show them the side of the view of the canards. I almost feel like that gap should be a little bit more the consistent. Gap here? No, I'm talking about the gap here yeah. and the gap there. I almost don't think I did that right. Because hmm. I, I feel like they could be, ooh, ooh, that's a good fit. That Dawn dishwasher detergent, that's some good stuff. We should link to Dawn dishwasher <laughs> detergent. Okay, so. As you can see, we've got a gap here. That's what I was talking about. You see the gap? Mm -hmm. It's bigger than the thickness of this. And see over here? I'm allowed to make this one too tight, so I don't know. I'm going to move it. Ooh, that does not feel like it's going to move. So I'm going to leave it. But I'm just, I'm going to just make a mental note that we need to look into that. Okay. okay. All right, so now we need four of the shorter screws. One spare, same thing. Mm -hmm. These four shorter screws are also going to be two millimeters. We're gonna go ahead and put the wing on. Ooh, don't forget the uh, giant black rod you gotta cram in there. So this is a super, super easy build. So you just ram the rod through. I like to pull it back so that you don't have anything uh, past center, okay? See how it's just barely sticking out a little bit? And that makes it easier to do this step. And you do put the screws in from the top. You see how this is gonna connect itself, so just kind of err on the side of caution until you've got it lined up. Oh, that is a wow. perfect fit. Wow, I wish they were always this no easy. Kidding. Now, before I get too far, I'm gonna slide that carbon fiber joiner, wing joiner, carbon fiber spar, whatever you wanna call it. I see there's no alignment right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back out. I'm gonna push that through and just get that started. And then with that started, now I'm gonna slide it in. Okay, now it's in. Okay. Cut your nails short or you would have just gouged the crap out of your wing by bumping into it. Okay. Oh yeah, it's going already. This is a miracle. I wish they always were this easy. So I gotta say, this is a perfect opportunity to say something like this. These planes have come so long, I mean so far, <laughs> since we started this process. Let's talk about batteries for a minute too because that uh, cooling fan spooling up made me think of it. We are gonna be using 5S, excuse me, 6S, 5000, 50C, 100C, or yeah, we're starting with 5,050C because this plane calls for a 45C or larger battery mm -hmm. pack. Mm -hmm. Now what that means is they're anticipating some high draw, okay? And I know why, because what's gonna happen is if you're anything like me, you're gonna get to flying this and you're gonna get into a high alpha lockout where you get into a high alpha and you can't restore yourself because you get to a spot where you've stalled all your control surfaces and you have essentially no airflow over the surfaces. So because of that, that means you're gonna to wanna to jank the power hard and there's not gonna be any more power to give. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be a good boy and I'm not gonna use up all my power in one spot. Okay, just slipping this in. Hmm. Uh, you know what happened? There we go. Much better. Okay, now I'll start here. Just work it in. Okay. Very good. amazing That's fit. Great. I mean, it's like so much better than most planes. And I don't, I mean, it's going to sound like we're gushing about this plane, but really, it's like so easy to put together. And they're not usually that easy. We used to have to like cut holes in foam to get screws to Listen, align. we shouldn't compare them all to Dynam. Well, that's true. It's probably not fair. <laughs> that's like the worst possible scenario. Yes. But it is so much easier to build these planes than it, it used is. to be. You almost never have to glue stuff, hardly ever anymore. Um, truthfully, the smaller planes you end up occasionally. I'm going to grab my thrust tube and just push with my hips. Oh. I know. <laughs> Oh, okay. It's just, you gotta do what you gotta do. Do you need a moment? No, well, it is pretty nice looking. 
Okay, so everything is tightened up, folks. The only thing we haven't put on is ordnance and nose cone. That is a super fast and efficient and easy build. There's more ordnance than there are actual like plain pieces. There's almost there as not? much ordnance as there is screws. You wanna? Might be more. Okay, so this just in and slide back. Are those ambidextrous? Hmm, that's actually a fair question. They appear to be. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. Much better than the last one, okay. Then this goes here and then slides back. Sort of, it's weird. Oh, funny angle. Okay, then this flat is where? It's back here. Okay, perfect. Now remember, when you pick up your plane, don't pick it up by the tip because you'll generally drop it by the tip. Okay, there you go. I grab my thrust tube again. Remember, when you hold a plane that's made of foam, you need to be thoughtful about how, if you hold really hard here, you can actually squish this. If you're a guy that uses his hands to work for a living, you can probably break through the foam. Okay, now if you're used to working with balsa wood planes, then you would crush them in half with that level of pressure. Man, that is so gorgeous, wow. Okay, all right. Are we gonna put the ordnance on? That was like the easiest build ever, what the heck? Okay. Well, I mean, we still have to like put the radio in and stuff. Yeah, I know, but that's radio set up. So it's like just not even the same thing. Do that was so dang easy. Are you not gonna put the ordnance on right away? I mean, how are we gonna put the ordnance on without the gear open? Well, that's true. We could wait till we have gear. <laughs> what? I'm gonna flip this over actually and show the people how freaking gorgeous this thing is. Look at that. That is so sweet and so sleek and gorgeous underneath. I love it. And this is not a small plane, folks. No, it's it's, it's a big plane. Now it's not as big as some planes we've done. But it's but it's like absolutely striking and amazing looking. And it definitely flies different. So I'm kind of excited. I feel like I'm a better pilot than I was the last time we mm -hmm. did it. And that's one thing too to keep in mind as you watch the Brian Phillips RC saga. <laughs> you'll notice that as with other people that do stuff on YouTube, whether it be, you know, cooking sausages or cleaning house. <laughs> or, Where are you going or, <laughs> Building things. We have gotten better over the years at doing what we do, but also over the years I've, I've gotten to be a better pilot um, you know, mostly just because I do it so much. And that's something I want to encourage you to do is as you take leaps from planes that are a little bit simpler to, to fly, you know, like your fixed wing UMX P51 ultra micro from horizon, you know, or maybe like the Bayhawk, very easy, easy flying plane, Futura V3, amazing flying plane. Um, but also easy to fly planes but you can do amazing things and also they're very fast. EDF jets are one of the arenas where as you progress through the ranks, people say, oh, well, they're hard to fly. You know, I disagree that they're hard to fly. It's more that they're hard to land because they tend to fly fast and faster flying planes do not necessarily mean hard to land. It just means that you need more room to develop a good landing approach because you have a lot of inertia and if you're flying in with full landing flaps on a, a PA-18 uh, 1.7 meter from FMS, I mean, you can, you can do a steep approach like this and land. Um, if you did that with this, you would, you would lawn dart the thing. There's no way you're ever gonna get it. So it's just, a, it's just a difference in flying style and a difference in snappy power performance. When you need power, you don't always get it as quick as you do with a tractor propped plane like a P-51 or you know, like that DA-18. Okay, so continuing onward. The cables from the servo connector board should be connected to your receiver in the order shown. Note that the LEDs can be powered uh, by any spare channel on the receiver or a Y cable on any channel because you're just stealing BEC voltage around the LEDs, okay? Uh, tuck the wire leads into the recessed cavity toward the rear of the battery hatch. So just uh, stuff it into the rear cavity if it fits. 
Now, this is part of what we need to not do, which is super nice because I do not want to do it at all. Right. This is actually something you would be able to do if you were doing it without having the Reflex V2. I don't believe that would come wired up, but it may actually be coming wired up. I don't ever review these in ARF format. Mm -mm. I don't even know that they offer them in ARF or ARF Plus. So if I'm wrong on that, I apologize. I don't mean to misrepresent the truth, but we've always done them as plug and fly for FMS. Mm -hmm. And whenever we've done for, and we've actually done a few that are in the ready to fly. So we don't even have to plug in a receiver for those. Now, also, if you're trying to figure out which one's which uh, on your drop tanks, this one is got the, you know, like the markings on the bottom. Okay. So that's the center. And then these ones have the markings on what would be the outside, okay? And yes, the pointy tip goes forward, okay? All right, so now continuing on with, they say we need ailerons, elevator, throttle, rudder, uh, gear, and spare, okay? Important ESC and model information. Okay, so it has a safe smart, they are talking about 22.2 volt, also known as 6S in a 4,000 through 5,000 45C battery, okay? Your center of gravity is gonna be 100 to 130 millimeters back. Let's see if it's marked real quick. Okay. I'm thinking we'll probably hang this plane upside down. So we're gonna grab uh, basically some calipers and probably a black marker. Yeah. Because it's actually got a dark, well, it's not dark blue, that's it's black. It just looks like blue when it's right here, sorry. Oh, that middle? Yeah. Yeah, probably is black or very, very, very dark one. Okay, so we're gonna measure out, how much is it, 110 to 130? Yeah, but it's from... Where the heck is it from? Oh, it's from where the wing mat, mount. Oh, okay. What are the measurements? 110 to 130. 110 to 130. Okay, so 110. Wow, look at that. I need to re-zero this. Huh, it is zero. 110. See how it says 110? Yeah. That's not lined up very good with the mechanical part, but that's fine. I'll go with the digital one. So 110 is going to put us, I'm measuring from the inside one to the inside one here. That's going to put us something like here. Okay. So right there. And then I'm gonna take while it's out like that, I'm gonna come back here and measure the same. Hmm. All right, and then we'll go to 130. Mm -hmm. Good Lord, 20 yeah, millimeters? 20 millimeter range. That is kind of like a huge range. Uh-huh. It is. Unusual, okay. Crap, we hit the black mark. See that? We're like right there. Oops. Okay, same thing here. Now I'm measuring from this other side. Oh, son of a biscuit lover. You guys see what I was concerned about? I didn't want to hit the black mark because right. if I hit the black mark, I won't be able to see my center of gravity balance point. Now, also, this is plastic reinforcement here. So even though those are good marks, I need to come out where I'm into the foam so I can feel it. See that? Mm -hmm. So that's a bit of a, a gaff on my part. If I would have realized that, I could have done that into the foam before, okay? So now why do I want it in the foam as opposed to like where it is now? First of all, I don't have a big problem with the dots. I think it, you know, it would pass as some sort of a, graphic as part of the aircraft, you know, like a fill spout or, you know, markings or whatever. It's gonna blend in. I don't think people will notice it unless they're model enthusiasts watching, watching me fly on models on YouTube. And then they will notice it. But I wanna be able to feel that bump when I have it uh, upside down with the batteries in, okay? So now let's talk about inside of here. Four to 5,000 milliamp hour. I have two of them charging. These are 50 C. I also have 100 C, they're both charged. These are gen two. So gen two is gonna be fine on this model because I don't have to depend on a voltage alarm. 
that I would be able to use on a Gen 1 with a balance lead. And that's because we're gonna have the voltage lead that comes out of our receiver. And our receiver is gonna be an 8220T. And we're gonna use the NX8 and hopefully we have plenty to get everything done. Because we really only need one channel to go safe, or not safe, but auto leveling, off, and stabilizer. Those are the three settings. Now we may, because we have landing gear on this plane, but we don't technically have flaps. We're gonna have to figure out how we wanna do this. Do, can you use a six channel? Um, uh, can you use a six channel? We have, well, that's a good question actually. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Huh. Well, that's an interesting thought, camera crew. Maybe we can do a six channel. That's why I'm here. To ask weird questions. Because you don't actually have flaps. I don't think there's a reason why you wouldn't be able to use a six channel. Because you would be able to use the sixth channel for your stabilization mode switching, right? So the camera crew brings up a very good point. This is gonna give me the added benefit of telemetry on the battery pack, okay? Which is helpful, but also somewhat fleeting on an EDF jet, because once you know how long you can fly, you pretty much don't get any extra flight. You might get an extra 10 seconds, 15 seconds, but you're not gonna go like two or three minutes extra, like you might on like the Carbon Z Cub or the Carbon Z Cessna 150T or something like that. So I have this Lemon RX receiver that I've been sitting on forever and I loved using Lemon RX and these are just a six channel ultralight receiver. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'll use that and we'll just make sure we don't run into any problems because even though I love this receiver and this is normally what I would recommend, we're gonna go ahead and go with a six channel that's very basic just to show you that if you decided you wanted to use a basic six channel, you can actually do that. Now, Obviously this is gonna give you the added benefit of the additional telemetry and it's not just telemetry in a flyby format, it's actually long range telemetry. So when you're way out there with a jet, it's nice to have that longer range telemetry. Now it's been forever since we use a Lemon RX receiver, but we have one right here, so we're gonna use it right now. Okay, now what is special about this? You may notice this obviously doesn't have a stabilizer and it doesn't matter because we don't need a stabilizer. So this is just a Lemon RX DSMX compatible six channel receiver. It's very light, okay? It does have a bind plug, and then you can wrap this thing around it like this if you choose to do so, which I guess in this case I will, because then, see, I will have a good place to mount to the base. So this thing sticks on there. Now, if you want to save a lot of weight, you can use this without this. And when I say a lot, I mean, I'm saying that kind of somewhat facetiously. It's not very much weight at all, but you can actually stick this back here over the electronic components. Okay. Then you can fold and crease and fold and crease. And then this thing, is just another piece of double-sided tape here. As you can see, it's quite small stuff. Okay. We haven't used these things forever, but they're really inexpensive and we, we really didn't have any problems with them. We had a problem with, I think, one. And when I say one, I mean it was the Lemon RX that was in DSMP, they call it, which is basically the same exact thing, it's DSMX, but they came up with a P as in, that's where we do our auto leveling. Okay, so I didn't get that quite lined up perfect. Gosh, I'm sucking at this today. Okay, so the hardest part of the build was putting the receiver cover on. Okay, so then that gives us somewhere to mount. And again, you wouldn't have to absolutely use that. It's actually been kind of just a huge pain in the butt, to be honest. Uh, so we can eliminate this from our little work area. And that's as large as it needs to be. Oh. Pretty exciting. Okay, so now let's talk about this. The other thing too is, 
This is kind of hard to see the labels now that we put that cover on there, but it is labeled under there. It says bind, the bind is over here. So I'll go ahead and put the bind plug in. And then we have throttle A1, E1, uh, L of, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna set it to whatever you set it to. Right. Okay, so step over here so I can try to get this mounted. Now, this is not a spatially aware receiver because the Reflex V2 is actually gonna be aware of its position. It's spatially aware, okay, that. So if you're gonna use the 8220T, um, which you wouldn't, you would just use probably a six channel DSMX compatible receiver. And if you use an AR620, then you're not gonna be running wires back and forth for leads for the telemetry feedback. By the way, if you stick anything that's long enough to reach that fan and get it cut off, you, you're you trying hard. Yeah, right. So just, uh, you know, I'm gonna cut this off. I always cut this off. I mean, I understand why they do it, but I don't want an additional thing in there getting in the way. No. And um, I'm sure that's what the EDF fan thinks too. But like I said, if you, reach something in there far enough to, to get into the fan, you've got, you're not gonna have that problem anymore. That's true. Oh man, that one came off. See, I've been super reluctant ever since I squished my thumb to peel stuff up peel. with my thumbnail because I'm afraid it's like gonna rip off. Everybody's like, oh, it's gonna rip off, Brian. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm trying to avoid it. I don't really wanna lose my thumbnail. It's gonna make it weird. And I don't, I kinda need to be able to feel with my thumbs because I use that for flying. All right, so now that that's out of the way, we have flap, we have gear, we have, so now hold on a second. Wait. Flap, wait a second, flap, why do we have flaps? Wait, do you have one that says elevator though? Oh, good point. No, that's, that's not coming from the reflex. That just says flap, as in, they're actually treating that as an inboard flap. Oh, I gotta think about this now for a second. So that kind of screws things up. We're gonna pause and talk about it. Okay, so we, after some deliberation, not much, we decided we're gonna try with the six channel and we're gonna see if I wanna Y the ailerons and flaps together, or if that's even possible. It may not be possible. I remember now that we set up uh, Crow on our other uh, Rafal. And so because we did crow, we needed eight channels. And so we did that, but it didn't really work that well anyway. So we're not gonna do crow again, that was a waste of time. Also, I'm coming to the conclusion that this just needs to be in here. And you can show them from this other side if you go over to my left, all the way around. The other side, there's a bit of a collar there, now that I can see from above. I'm just gonna push this all the way down in if it'll go, okay? So just loosening that and sliding it in. You see, now it's where it's gotta be. That's the way it's supposed to be for sure. See how it's all the way almost in there? And then this one's almost all the way in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through this process as though we're not using flaps and then later we'll either mix in the flaps by wiring off of the output of the reflex right there, wherever that comes out or we'll do something different, but I'm not sure if we can get away with that just because of the nature of the flaps. The flaps should move the same direction. So I honestly don't know what we're gonna do yet. Okay, so the battery has to go in here at some point. And uh, normally we take this thing off and we do the shelf liner trick. So I think we should probably, we've been having good luck with that. So we're gonna do that again. The shelf liner trick is the super easiest way to not have to put Velcro on every one of your batteries because I'm gonna give you the 100% guarantee it's always gonna be on the wrong side or there'll be some extenuating circumstance. Unless you're one of those um, weird people that uses certain batteries for certain planes and you never share those batteries with any other planes. Hmm. And that would be nice if you could do that, but you'd have to have a lot of batteries. Oh my goodness. We have a lot of batteries and that would be not possible for us. Okay, so let's pop this thing off. Super sticky stuff, this is. 
And then all you do is you stick that onto your shelf liner. Yes, this is shelf liner, like what you would put in your, your shelves, and then it stops things from slipping and sliding easily. I mean, of course, there is a limit to all that, but if you have a little bit of additional friction from the Velcro holding the battery into the shelf liner, then you're golden. So obviously it's a big flat battery. You're not gonna be able to put it vertical because it'll hit the canopy. So in my case, I'm just gonna plop it right back down where it came from. You're still depending on the Velcro, just uh, on the other side of things. Okay, I wish there was a way to hold those. It'd be nice. Can you hold those? I can. For just a second? Sure. I won't have to have you hold it for long because I'm just gonna put the battery in and then once it's in, we can figure out where the receiver might fit. Okay, so Velcro, these are the high quality Velcro straps. We've come to expect on the FMS planes, they, they almost never put the little cheapy ones in there. I don't think they mm -hmm. do, even in the 800 millimeter ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the battery is gonna have to go this way because if we go this way, I don't think we'll reach. Let's try real quick. And um, yeah, it's not gonna go unless we use an extension cord. So I don't wanna go with an extension cord. So I'm gonna put this where I think I need it, which is probably back here. Okay, and then we're gonna pull up some slack. Thank goodness that does come through. And this is one of those things that we've talked about before. If it's hard to put a battery in a plane, you're gonna eventually kind of talk yourself out of flying it. So I love that these things are not too terribly hard to load. I wish there was an easier way even still. It's been, you know, a lot better than it was in the past but I still feel like there's room for improvement. Just that we wanna, we wanna have flexibility to be able to use more than one specific battery. So I understand we have to kind of compromise, like you can't have a clamp or something in there that's gonna fit only one battery. Now, since this receiver is not gonna be spatially aware, it can go wherever, okay? And we do have a little piece of double-sided tape that we can use when we get to that point, but for now, we're just gonna hook it up as though it's gonna hang loose. Okay, you can go and let go of these. Okay. So now I am gonna have to plug into the gear and I'm pretty, pretty much certain that the gear is gonna go into the gear channel, which in our case, the gear channel is usually channel five, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, so channel five is marked as gear. Brown goes down, okay, so signal goes up. Okay, so that's like that. And that's the shortest wire, so it kind of dictates position. And then flap is just gonna remain unhooked for now, for the moment, okay? Then this is elevator. So now we need to figure out where things are gonna plug in. And that's where we have to have our wing type, or aircraft type as they call it now, on the transmitter. So you're gonna turn on your transmitter, keep your throttle cut turned on, keep your sticks down, put them in the neutral position where you want them. Gear would be down, cancel them back, scroll down to a new model. We're gonna create an acro. This takes a second, especially when you have more, seems to take a little bit longer. So as we add more and more and more models, it takes a little bit longer for the data registry to get cleared up. So now we can go into model name and this is where we'll type in the name. So it's 125 colon space. And then we can start in with Desalt Rafal, 80 millimeter. Except for us, this is our second Desalt Rafal, so we have to come up with some creative way of saying that, so we'll be right back. Okay, so the Rafal 80 millimeter reflex V2, so that's all we could fit, so. Uh, aircraft type, now this is the part that I'm not 100% sure about yet. I think you set it just as normal wing type, okay? And then the mixing is handled, but I just wanna let you know one thing I'm concerned about, and let's talk about this for a second. We noticed the flap cable, okay? So now in real time, I've been thinking about this for about 10 minutes off camera. And I was thinking about the prospect of doing flaps on this plane is not gonna really work great because the nature of the Delta wing, you're gonna have essentially what's ailerons and elevator, so a Telvon. And then the inboard portions are called flaps on this plane, I believe. But I'm not sure how the mixing board works and I can't remember back to when we did it the first time. So as a result, I'm thinking of treating that like an elevator. So I may Y into that as an elevator, letting the stabilization happen through the canards and the televons, but it's gonna be treated like a normal plane in terms of the radio setup. 
That's because the Reflex V2 will handle the mixing for the control characteristics of those things. Now, that being said, I don't know how it's gonna mix the flaps because the flaps are not going through the reflex. So currently the flaps are gonna be right where an elevator would be. So my thought was if I mixed in um, a channel for elevator redundancy, I can actually make it operate like an inboard flap actuated by a flap mode, okay? But then I can do it so that I can, I can have crow without actually having crow. So we'll talk about that more as we go along. And so I apologize in advance. Um, some commenters have suggested in the past that we should figure this all out and then share it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that because you know I, I'm just gonna figure it out. That's what we do on this channel is we teach you guys how to work through these problems. Now, this is a weird technical problem. It's not necessarily, I don't wanna say it's a problem. It's an, a technical opportunity. <laughs> That's like the corporate way <laughs> very, of saying yes, it. Good job. So what I, what I wanna do is I wanna get the most out of this plane, but also I feel like the reflex on the last plane was not like really a benefit because you should be landing it in high alpha anyway. So the reflex does not necessarily help with high alpha. It just helps to give you one more way to break the plane. Um, you mean flaps, right? Not I mean, reflex. I no, I I mean reflex, but oh, okay. reflex is another word that people use for crow. And I'm sorry because okay. that is a little bit confusing confusing given that we have a reflex V2 device inside of here. So crow meaning that the ailerons go up, the inboard flaps or the acting inboard flaps would go down, and then the ailerons would continue to function as ailerons and spoilerons in that exact condition. So it'd be like spoilerons, flaps, and then these would also operate as flapperons, except they're going upwards, so spoilerons. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then you have this braking surface where this goes up, that goes down, this goes down, this goes up. And then you have this like the elimination of duties so that you know you've got one that's making you want to lift the nose, you've got one that's wanting to make you push the nose down. So it's a net sum gain and you keep flying the trajectory that you would have otherwise flown on. Problem is, that's not really what happens. When you put reflex or crow to a delta wing plane, you tend to slow the plane down and change the attitude of the aircraft anyway. So it's kind of a weird complex thing you have to play with. So in that case, we're gonna set it up. We're gonna see if we even do anything with those uh, inboard flaps. My guess is I'm probably gonna steal a channel that I would normally use for turning on stabilizer, stabilizer or auto leveling. And so what that means is I'm going to have to make a decision on how I command the device stay in stabilizer as opposed to going back to auto leveling, as opposed to going to the off condition, because there's three conditions. There's full auto leveling and stabilization, there's off, and then there's stabilizer only. I want stabilizer only all the time, and I really don't need to turn it off, and I really don't need auto level. But if you're trying to do this plane as a beginner, you are mistaking yourselves. This is not a good beginner plane. I would not do it. It's too complicated. It's too challenging to fly. Uh, even though a lot of people that say it's easy to fly, you have to put it into perspective of who's saying that. The people that are saying that are really good pilots and they forget it's not that easy to fly. So full disclosure, no BS from Brian Phillips RC here. I feel like I'm a pretty good pilot. I'm not the best on the planet. I'm certainly not the worst, but I'm somewhere in the middle and I'm advancing. As I get better, I have more capability and more confidence in my ability to fly a plane. But I also know my limits and then the Rafal is like one of those that I, it's kind of like this weird middle ground where I'm not, I'm not great with it, I'm not terrible with it, but anyway. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna set it up as a normal tail, I'm gonna set it up as a normal wing, but then I need to also, because I want the flat mode, I wanna go ahead and set it up as this so that I can actually have the flap menu, okay? Now the other thing too I had thought about is I had thought about, and I'm just gonna change this to that picture. I thought about using flap mode to then command the elevator mix, and then I can just have a mix, two flaps, that commands elevator. Because really, if I mix those to function opposite these, then you get what you want out of it still, I think. But anyway, I, I'm just gonna have to come back to that. Now, I was talking about making a flight mode possibly too. The flight mode would be managed here and then it's gonna command a change in performance out there. Okay, but it's all located here. 
And if you use a Spectrum receiver with AS3X and SAFE, then the flight modes help to establish what mode that all is happening up there too. And when I, up there, I mean like on the receiver, okay? So you have to think about it like this. You have a lot of stuff happening here. You have a lot of mixing, a lot of trim, a lot of exact position, absolute position here. But then up here, you're just like, re, you know, you're just replicating it out to the control surfaces. Well, on a smart receiver, there's also decisions being made up here and then going out. That's actually not happening here now. It's happening on the reflex past this. So you have to think about it in two different ways. So when you're thinking about the way you're gonna set up a plane, am I gonna use AS3X or SAFE? Or am I gonna use both? Or am I gonna use the reflex V2? So in this case, we're setting it up with a very basic receiver. And the only non-basic thing on here is this telemetry port because you can hook up more telemetry to it, which I'm not gonna use. Okay, so continuing onward, now we can exit out of the menu. We've got the name here, we've got the timer. We're gonna go ahead and go into throttle cut first. We're gonna turn that on to switch H. We'll make sure it's working by looking at that output down there. Nothing's happening, that's what we want. And now it's live and active. Okay, we're gonna turn it back on. Then we're gonna set up flap system. We're not gonna mess with yet. We're just gonna have it available when we need it. Timer we're gonna set to, let's go three and a half minutes. And we're gonna set it to one out and we're gonna go next. Now remember, we don't have any warning from a voltage alarm if we use a Gen 2 battery. So we're gonna have to go back to a Gen 1 so we can have a voltage alarm to confirm our theory about three and a half minutes. Okay, so I want a voice warning at one minute, nothing at 20, and then a voice countdown at 10 with the expiration doing a tone and vibrate. That's what we want. You may differ from that, that's fine. Okay, throttle cuts on. So now we have to make an assignment for switch B, I guess, technically too. So let's do flap system, switch B, okay. And we're just gonna make no change, right? So it's on, it's attached to switch B, but then auxiliary two is also being commanded by this, but we don't care because it's one, two, three, four, five, six. We aren't even commanding these things anymore. Those don't matter because we only have a six channel receiver. Okay. So now when we plug in all of our features, we're gonna plug them in as the monitor shows, which is right here. That's why we set it up. So throttles channel one. So channel one is right next to the bind plug. So that's really easy. So we're going in here looking for throttle. There's throt. Okay. And this is where your cable management can be either exaggerated or minimized. And so I'm gonna be careful. Brown goes away from me. So you plug it into this. You're like, Brian, how do you know where the brown goes? Because if you look on this board somewhere, it's silk screened. But in my case, I put the stupid cover on here and of course you can't read. And it's really hard to tell. So I'm just gonna go with what I remember. And that's that the brown would be down, okay? How do you know that, Brian? Because I used to do it before and at one point I had seen a silk screen somewhere, okay? Elevator, okay, so what's next? Aileron, then elevator, mm -hmm. okay? So we'll just go to elevator, channel three. And you're like, but isn't this channel one? No, that's the buying plug, then channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, channel six, okay? Then ailerons is channel two, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, brown is down. Stick it in the hole. And then what do we have here? We have, ooh, okay. Must have been a bird, if you heard the noise in the background. Yep, the bird committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Sorry, bird. Better luck next lifetime. Rudder. Okay, nice. rudder. See, I'm not the only one that runs into this house. <laughs> <laughs> he was going pretty fast, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now, this is where the mode is gonna go for now. But I don't know if it's gonna stay plugged in. We're gonna find out, okay? So I'm just gonna plug it into this channel and we'll, we'll get to that shortly, okay? So now this is not spatially aware, so it doesn't really matter. And the gear may try to shoot out, so I'm going to intentionally put the gear in what I believe to be the up condition, and I could be wrong, so I need to be prepared to go ahead and lift the plane up. Now, normally if you had a plane stand, you would have it on the plane stand at this point, and this would be probably a wise thing to do. So I think in my case, I'm just gonna be Johnny on the spot, meaning I'm ready to grab it. If it starts going down, I'll lift the plane up so the wheels can come down. That is something you have to be thinking about because if you overload everything, you can damage stuff. So it's always better to just have it propped up. In fact, why don't we 
prop it up with a plane stand. So if you have a plane stand, some of these, some of these planes work better um, on the plane stands than others. This is just one of those where, I remember we were doing that one the other day and it didn't work very well, just because of the shape of the plane. So if you wanna just kind of help me with that for a mm -hmm. sec. So we'll just put this down right there. Should be no problem. And then the main landing gear are kind of, okay, that oh, wasn't too bad. Checking the nose gear, make sure it's gonna clear. It will clear. Okay, cool. So now, got throttle cut on. We're gonna go into the function list. Scroll down to bind and just be prepared. Okay. So bind yes is highlighted. We're gonna plug this in right now. Okay, so bind yes. Ah, oh, son of a biscuit. It always times out right before I get to it. Okay, very cool. Okay, so as you can see, things are dancing. Okay, things are dancing, everybody's happy. It's just party time, excellent. Woo! Ailerons, elevator. Okay, so the elevator is mixed. As you can see, roll left, roll right. Yaw left, yaw right, let's open the gear. Oh, yeah! So cool. All right, closing the gear. So cool. Those are some big gear door too. They are. Okay, so gear down. Steerable. Look how sweet these things are. <laughs> that is so much throw. And then same is true for all of them. Super detailed, really stiff spring on those though. Very squishy. Nope. No. They're know. rock hard. Yep. Not, they're anti-squishy. Yeah. And to be honest with you, if you have a good enough spring, the squishy is less critical, but it's still pretty critical. And I still feel that it is a huge miss on the RC manufacturer's part to not have amazing soft tires like we would experience on an RC car. Because we've been doing a lot of surface vehicles and the surface vehicles are getting spoiled big time right now. Okay, so looking at the control surfaces, I'm gonna close those two out of the way. Elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. Now, why is it like up like this? That's so weird. I don't understand that. Also, I am gonna go over to monitor mode. I can't tell what mode I'm in, so let's look right here. Technically, flaps are not doing anything. That's the channel that's commanding the mode right now. Not because we want flaps to be tied to mode, it just happens to be the way we wired it. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go in here to flap system and I'm just gonna set it to like plus 100, minus 100, okay? So this is gonna change our mode. Okay, so, so you can look right there. You see how it's fast, fast flash. flash? Nothing, Nothing, or very slow flash, and then solid. Okay, so solid, elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. Let's actually check the direction of travel real quick too. So coming around to the back of the plane, I could have turned the plane around, but in this case, I'm gonna just put it this way. Okay, so we've got the plane kind of level and true. Elevator up. Elevator down. So that would put, put the nose down, that would put the nose up. That would roll the plane to the left, right? Yeah, no, that's backward, okay. So I need to go into servo setup, travel, subterm, reverse, ailerons, okay. Roll left, that would push this down, okay. That's correct, that's correct, that's correct, that's correct. Down, up, roll left, roll right. Take off flaps and landing flaps don't do anything yet. Also, I'm noticing a huge disparity on this canard. Do you see that canard? How it's like way, 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 way different than mm -hmm. the other side? Yes. I am gonna have to loosen that and hope that it's a set screw issue. Otherwise, we have to go in there and mess with the servo, which is not a fun process. I feel like we had to do that last time, possibly. Okay, so I backed it off. 
Now I've got this tight and look at it. It's up, it up a more. lot more than the other side. What the heck? That's weird, weird. Okay, so I'm gonna back this one off and just see if maybe I've got something set screw wise wrong. Okay, that's very weird. Those are freaking even now. Okay, yep. whatever. I'm gonna write it off as a fluke, but all I gotta say is, I don't know how that worked that way, but I'm happy with it, because I didn't want to take off those covers. No. Up, down. All right, so everything's working there. That's working. The steerable's working. Everything is working with the exception of those things, which are technically flaps, okay? Flaps are not attached to anything right now. I kind of tend to think that'd be cool to have elevators attached to that and then that act as a flap. So I'm just torn. What happens when I disconnect the mode? Let's see. S bus mode. Okay. So I'm going to put it in. It's not going to, not going to matter because it's going to go to whatever it goes to. So when it's disconnected, it's in a solid light. Okay. So solid light means Nothing changes there, nothing changes there. Let's see if we have a stabilizer on or auto leveling, okay? So the default state is auto leveling, okay? Auto leveling is gonna be a big no-go for me, okay? I don't want auto leveling. So that's kind of a bummer because that means that we're gonna have to command this control or we're gonna have to have it attached wide into something else, okay? Is there a way to manually Possibly. change? And there usually, there, there is, but it's all through reflex. So now I have to figure out how to do that. So we might pause for a minute and look into that and see if we can figure it out to give you guys the answer. All right, so before we dig into this flap thing, let's look at one other thing. I wanna to go to servo setup, travel, whoops. And I wanna set ailerons to 150 and just see what happens. Okay, then I wanna set elevators to 150. Did that make any change? I can't tell. Hmm. Let's set it down to, here's how you can tell. I don't see any difference, do you? Mm -mm. Okay, so in that case, okay, I cleared that back to zero. So that means that the flight controller, or not the flight controller, but the actual electrical mixing board is actually limiting the amount of throw. Okay, so that's one other thing we have to contend with. So at this point, we could do nothing and we could just not hook up that surface. Or now that we have we could actually plug in this flap and I'm gonna leave it in the mode I want, which is, let's see what happens when I disconnect this. Oh, it actually does stay in that mode. See, now it's just flashing. So that means it's in stabilizer mode, but not auto leveling. Up goes up, down goes down, up goes up. Up goes up, up goes up. Yaw, yaw, up goes, I can't see the canards good enough to tell. So as long as the surfaces do the right thing, I don't really care, that's fine. So it's actually in that mode now, but I don't know if it'll stay in that mode once we power cycle. So we need to answer that question mm, shortly, okay. okay? So flaps are now gonna get plugged back in there. You see, I put the S bus mode to whatever I wanted, then I just disconnected it, okay? So maybe it just stays in the last known mode. That'd be sweet. Okay, so now I have the flaps plugged in, okay? So that's pretty interesting. So elevator up, elevator down. Well, that is, <sighs> okay. All right, so three position switch for flaps. Take off flaps, landing flaps, roll left, roll right, roll left, roll right. So everything is already mixed for us, so I'm torn now because I feel like I told you not to use the 8020T when that would be a perfect fit because then you would still have the mode switch. But for me, if you can do it with a six channel and just teach it to be in a correct mode, let's show the people what happens when I de-energize this circuit. Okay. 
That's gonna tell us what's gonna happen. You see, see how that's slow flashing there? Yep. Okay, now what happens when I de-energize it? Off, now let's re-power cycle. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Oh man, these plugs can be so terrible sometimes. There we go. Now it's in fast flash. But is it, wait, now it's in slow flash. Okay, so guys, I just wanna talk about this for a second. I want you to understand how this works because I did not know this until just now. I had a Y cable and a straight through cable ready to Y in the elevator. I don't need to do that. So let's just look at this. When I lift this up, it's gonna go up. Now this is where you have to be careful. It's gonna go up. Up is up, down is down. Left is left, right is right. Now I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. Then up, I can't tell, the canards are too small. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to come along with a ride, come along for a ride with me. First of all, I'm gonna stick this in here. I'm gonna leave this mode cable up here just in case we have to revisit this. But for now, I can just stuff this in here and just kind of get it out of the way because I don't know if our CG is gonna be right. But we're probably done. That was like way easier than I thought it needed to be. And did, did you notice that the, the ailerons are not all like wonky now? They're not wonky because the, that's right. Yeah, as soon as you plugged in the flaps. <sighs> You're right. They're not weird now. You know why? Because that's the neutral flap setting, zero. On spectrum zero is zero, that's center. Plus 100 is all the way up or all the way down. And then minus 100 is all the way down or all the way up. Oh. And we were in neutral. Right. That's the best we could do before. Okay, now let's check our 150 again before we do the next test. So ailerons, elevators, are, okay. So on elevator, is there more movement? I can't tell, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the stick all the way back, highlight. Uh -uh. Once you get below 100, it does make impact. Okay, so what that means is that if you're trying to play with the output, you can only go to 100, you cannot go beyond 100. Wait, yes you can, see that? Looks like about 125. Once you get over 125, there's no more adjustment. Yep. So you can go to about 125 on the elevator. And then on the ailerons, let's test the same thing. Clear it back to zero, roll left. Yep, it moves more. So the absolute travel goes up to about 125. Nothing changes after that. So I would, it's actually a little bit less. It's like 110 or so. Mm. So I would say, let's just put it to 125 on those. Yeah, it definitely was moving. Okay, cool. So that means we have the max up, we have the max down, we have the max roll left, we have the max roll right, okay? and then take off flaps, landing flaps. That's what you're gonna get for flaps. Now, flaps are gonna be more for helping to slow the plane down once you've landed, okay? So we don't wanna do a delayed deployment like we would on an ordinary flap mechanism. Now, the other thing is we don't wanna do any mixing for elevator mix because it's literally the same surface. So, uh, so it's complicated, but I do <laughs> wanna just check that real quick. Let's go to flap system. And let's go in here and set the elevator correction like really crazy, okay? Now watch this. See that? There's flaps. I don't think elevator correction is gonna make sense in this application. So I have 75% on takeoff flaps. Look at this. So that brings them both down and all the way down. So what I'm saying is I don't think you're gonna use your elevator correction because in a Delta configuration, it doesn't work, okay? You would just be undermining what you're doing, mm -hmm. okay? And we do want it to be a fast acting behavior. We don't want that to be a slow acting behavior because there's not really any reason to like subtly advance into that setting, I don't think. 
but I might be wrong on that one too. We may have to set that to two seconds like normal. Because you can do that in flight. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna split the difference and I'm gonna go to a two second deployment speed for my reflex. Nope, nope. see, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't do even it. work. Okay, so that answers that question. So I wanna show you guys what I'm talking about. The reason that slow doesn't work is because you're going from minus 100 to zero and then to plus 100 or vice versa, okay? I might actually have that backward, but it looks like I have it about right. And what it's doing is if you look at the monitor with me, you can see when you control the flaps, you go to middle and then you go to the bottom. Now let's try one more thing. Let's see if we can change servo setup on flaps. Nothing changes as you can see. Okay. Nothing changes yet. I want to put it to 150. See, nothing even changes at all, okay? So the flight controller is definitely making, or the mixing board is definitely making active decisions. So just be aware of that. The reflex and the mixing board are working together to give you the output you need. So that's really cool. So you, you basically need a six channel receiver, but you just kind of cheat the reflex into the right port. You set what you want and then you can power cycle it. So it's pretty cool. So we'll, double, we'll definitely be double checking stuff. Now come along yeah. with the ride for me. We were talking about this earlier. Oh, okay. I wanna go ahead and uh, put the canopy on so that it's on. Now I want you guys to know that we are in a slow flash condition, okay? On the reflex, which means that we have, whoops. Why? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So now what I wanna do is I want to somehow hold this so that I can look at the controls. Ew, this is gonna be really tough. You're, You're gonna pick it up first and then I'll hand you the camera. You sure? Yeah. How about this? Just how try do. standing right there and see if they can watch. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna go down. You're not gonna be able to see it. It's way too subtle. It's too, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna hold my hand under the belly of the beast, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the plane up. Now, the whole plane up, not just the aileron roll. Okay, so that's gonna go up, that's gonna go down. That's gonna go up, that's gonna go down. It's subtle, but it's doing it. Mm -hmm. Look at the inboard portion right here, folks. Up, down. It needs to resist the direction. Now, I'm gonna rotate this wing that we're looking at up. Okay, it's resisting. Now, an easier way is to move it very fast and then go very fast the other way, spinning my whole body. It looks like I'm dancing with this thing. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the camera so that you guys can see the rudder as I yaw the plane right and left. You see, it goes the same direction I'm moving it, okay? It's trying to resist the movement. Now, canards are not really moving much so I'm not sure if that's a function of the stabilizer or what. Up, down. So as you can see, there's not much going on. So I think the delta is where the correction's happening through the Telvons, mm. okay? So the cool part is this plane is basically ready to fly right now, but let's show them why we're not flying yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. You see that wind? Not only is it extremely insane, it's totally crosswind yeah. from our strip. So we're not gonna be flying this thing today, but the cool part is we're gonna be flying it very soon. And the cool part is we did that with a six channel receiver, which is really nice. Yeah. So now that being said, if you want the flexibility of having the better, and by the way, let's watch these gear. Let's watch these gear. These things are gorgeous. Oops, that's my throttle cut. So beautiful. I don't know if you guys picked up, but there's a 90 degree rotation on the mains. That is so sweet. And then the light shuts off. That is so sweet. Okay. And then you come in and basically, this plane is awkward to hold too, I noticed. And you don't even have ordnance on it yet. I know. Once you put ordnance on, it's really tough. But what a sweet looking plane. And honestly, I kind of enjoy the challenge of flying a different plane. Uh, but it also kind of scares me. And it's definitely something that I stray away from a little bit more than I should. 
A lot of throw on the nose gear for steerability. That is so cool. Okay, now we haven't even run the uh, throttle, so we'll go ahead and give you guys oh, a little yeah. taste of that. Gonna do it real slow, just cause I don't want it to like, try to take off on me or anything. It's about like 5% throttle. Okay. You wanna try the power you to weight to ratio? Here. Oh. I wanna try it, but I think I'm gonna have to put the gear up again. Because if I try this, I gotta try it with the gear up so I can actually hold it. Oh, okay, okay, gotta wait for the gear door. All right, so historically, when I've done this test, and it's a big plane, I basically get myself in a situation where, I mean, I don't wanna drop the plane, obviously. Okay, so here we go. So throttle cuts off. And I want you guys to be able to see it. So I'm gonna just relax into it. It's pretty, pretty good. Pretty good, but as you can see, holding it from the wing is tough without the throttle assist. <laughs> so I can't wait to get this thing in the air. It's gonna be so cool, but also I gotta say, it is like one of the weirdest planes to hold. It's one of the weirdest planes to put together for the radio setup, and yet it wasn't hard. It was just, as usual, Brian Phillips overthink. <laughs> but that's kind of, you know, it just happens sometimes. So I love the way the thing looks. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you don't like the livery on it, I get it. But at the same time, I really think it's cool. I have an appreciation for how neat it looks. I also love the fact that the lights are very bright and yes. we definitely have landing lights that are bright. And believe it or not, that makes a big difference if you're flying low light. If you haven't experienced it before, you have better eyes than me. So guys, without further ado, we're gonna end this video. If you wanna help support us, buy this thing from the link in the video description below. You can have it in two to three days from following our links. Uh, provided it's in stock and you're in North America. And then also, if you guys don't like this one, but you want something else, like maybe that other Rafal that we did recently, it's a very cool plane, but just to let you know, not functioning canards, they're non-functioning canards, fixed gear, and definitely no flaps. So I just want you to know, this thing weighs about as much as the ordinance though. <laughs> Okay, slight exaggeration, but 64 millimeter here, beautiful plane. 80 millimeter here, beautiful plane. Way more beautiful. Better landing gear, more features, more, way more complicated uh, electronics. But this thing flies on a way smaller battery that's way cheaper to charge and way lighter and easier to store and transport. And you're not gonna belly land this unless you're having an accident, okay? That's yeah. my expectation. Because you're gonna break gear door and all that stuff. So I definitely have to say, scale lines are phenomenal on this one, okay? They're beautiful. But on this one, it's just over the top. I mean, it looks like a plastic model. And it's just something we didn't get before. And, and we're all of a sudden, we're coming to expect it because FMS and some other good brands out there are really doing a great job with these scale models. So hopefully we answered your questions, giving you guys some insight between these two choices. Um, if you're into loving Rafales, these things are really good options. If you're not into the Delta Wing, you want something a little bit more consistent with what you're used to flying, the Futura V3 is amazing. The Bay Hawk is amazing. I mean, really good flying plane. I love flying it. You can land it in a very short distance, given how fast it goes. I mean, like well over 100 miles an hour fast. And the only thing that they're lacking is thrust reverse, which can be easily remedied if you're setting them up the way we set them up with Spectrum receivers. So that all being said, we're gonna sign out for now, guys. We hope this build video wasn't too frustrating to watch. I know there was a little bit more waffling than we would normally do, but at the end of the day, we do want to learn this with you and uh, we hope that it was helpful. Also, the maiden flights will hopefully answer some of these questions. Now, we didn't do something that I'm just recognizing. We never set up rates and, we have oh, to set up dual, dual rates, rates and expo. expo. So let's do that okay. real quick. Dual rates and expo may be kind of a big factor on this plane. So just because the nature of the plane, I'm gonna go into dual, oops.
Dual rates and expo. I'm gonna set ailerons to switch F. I'm gonna start at five. I'm gonna go to 10. And then I'm gonna go to 20. And I'm gonna drop the rates down to 90, okay? Then I'm gonna go to elevator. I'm gonna set it to switch F again. I'm gonna go to five. Then I'm gonna go to 10. Then I'm gonna go to 20. Dropping the rates down to 90. And then for rudder, I'm gonna set it to switch F. I'm gonna do the first setting to five, the second setting to 10, and then the third setting to 20, with the rates being reduced down to 90. Now, why did we do all that on all three surfaces? We start in the middle. It gives us somewhere to go. If there's not enough sensitivity, we can get more sensitivity to get it to the ground. If there's too much sensitivity, we can get less sensitivity to get it to the ground. And then that becomes our new middle on the particular control axis that's giving us trouble. Now also keep in mind, we cannot turn on auto leveling as we have configured this plane. So if you want auto leveling and the ability to turn it off and go back to stabilizer, which I almost never recommend auto leveling if you can't shut it off. Auto leveling is great when you're learning, but you still wanna be able to turn it off because when you're going to do loops and rolls and things like that, you're gonna have a limited bank angle. So you're not gonna be able to roll it over. So if that's the case, that's the receiver you want. The 82, 20, or excuse me, the 8020T rather. Mm -hmm. And the 8020T is gonna give you one more thing you have to do, and that is that little red and black wire would have to be landed on your battery lead. And so wherever this comes out, you would just pierce the positive and negative in, and then carry it back to where you put your receiver, okay? Now that receiver is also not spatially aware, and so you can put it wherever you want. And so that's one thing that's really nice about this reflex setup is that you see how much cable management I did, which was like none, and yet the battery's in there. Now, we also need to check the CG, uh, given where we have everything set up. I think we're gonna be about right, but let's try. We've got the dots here, and this is where having a 20 millimeter range is not so good, because like you could have at the front holes, we're nose heavy. At the back holes, we're still nose heavy. Mm. Okay, well that answers that question really quick. So we are definitely not acceptable. We're gonna have to move the battery back quite a little bit. Hmm. Okay, so I wonder how we're gonna do this. That's tricky. So we're gonna undo this. Now this is something that's you know, it's always nice to have it out of the way before you do your maiden. And so for us, we get a plane done. And when it's real windy like this, we always like build the plane, get it ready to go. And then we just like sit on pins and needles until we get good weather. <laughs> okay, so that's a long ways back. And it feels like that's probably gonna be enough. I have this accessible just in case we need it. Okay. I'd really rather have this down there so that I can pull upward and not get on the edge of the battery because I feel like I'm gonna damage the lipo. See how close that is to the edge? It will actually dent your battery because these are technically soft packs. Okay, good job FMS for not gluing our straps. That is so annoying when the manufacturers do that. Okay, put a piece back on and I need a little bit of room so I don't whack mm -hmm. you with the tail. Okay, so fingers. sort of in the, the front middle range. Still nose heavy. I don't like adding dead weight if I haven't already made that clear in this video and that's something that we always stick to. I have done it before and I hate doing it. Okay, I'm gonna go back like, so we're out of this strap probably. Now this is a 5006S, you could also use a bigger strap and that shelf liner really works good. Okay. You can see I've pushed it all the way back now. I'm gonna grab my thrust tube. Oh man, that's, ooh, that feels oh, terrible. Okay, that's pretty that far. Good. I'm gonna go so that I can pull the battery out the front still with that Velcro. Okay, so we're another inch back. And you can see I'm making pretty coarse adjustments right now 
to get the center of gravity figured out, but it's like, psh, I'm a long ways off. If you get your CG back too far on this plane, it'll fly super, super stable and it'll suck the land. Like you'll be going 200 miles an hour. Okay, now we're tail heavy on the front, nose heavy on the back, but we are definitely, I'm right there in the center and we're close. So I would say I'm comfortable starting there. Here's why. On a plane that flies weird, like the Rafal, and I say weird, it, it is different, okay? I want to not be too tail heavy and I want not to be too nose heavy. So I have to necessarily err on somewhere in the middle. I think the people that are flying this a lot are gonna tend to wanna go, you know, so that it's, it's balancing somewhere back here, okay? Um, or excuse me, so that it's tail heavy, even back here, okay? So I think really right now, I'll go ahead and mark this as my initial range. And then when we do our maiden flight, this is where we're gonna locate the battery. And keep in mind, this is not the 100 C pack. This is a 50 C pack. My 100 C pack does give us a voltage alarm plug. So this is gonna be here to here. And this is a 6S uh, 5000. That looked like a six, of course, milliamp hour. And then I draw an arrow that goes back to indicate where the wires go. Okay, so 5,000. Do you wanna make a mark in there somewhere else C. random? 100 about... C, 100 C is what I'm gonna start with. Oh yeah. Cause that's a gen one, it has a balance, balance lead. lead. Something about the slow flash though, so we know. Oh, slow flash. Yep. The light condition is gonna be critical in this. Yep. Normally we wouldn't Check care. reflex. For slow flash. For stabilizer on, stab on. Mm-hmm. So it never hurts to have a note inside of the canopy because you're always getting in the canopy every time you start your plane up. And also for us, it's tough because we have just so many different planes. It's hard to keep them straight. And I gotta just point this out again. If you guys are thinking about something light and easy and everyday flyer, you know, this thing is definitely in that arena. Um, the Rafale, the bigger Rafale is definitely a bigger plane. It's gonna be more complex, but you saw it as quick as I did. You can take out four screws you don't even mm -hmm. need to take the ordnance off to take the wings off. Two screws makes this thing like half the size. Retract the gear and it's small. Yeah, that's true. So kind of similar to the D18 where you can literally snap the wings out. That's even faster. No tools. But then if you retract the gear on this, it gets really dinky really quick. So manufacturers are doing us huge favors in portability of these airplanes. Um, sorry, we almost forgot to do the Expo dual rates and CG there. But now that we've covered those items, we wanna say thanks for watching guys. Best audience in YouTube history. If you wanna help support us, the easiest way to do it is to follow the links to buy these planes when we review them. That helps us build clout with our different companies that we work with, but it also earns us small commissions that add up over time when lots of people are buying a popular airplane that helps us to fund our channel. Mm -hmm. And that's the best way you can support us if you're trying to for, support us financially. We also have Patreons, a small group of really loyal people who have been following us for some time. And they send us money on a mo monthly basis, uh, usually through like an automatic uh, credit card withdrawal is usually how people do it. So we really appreciate you guys. Thanks for being Patreons. If you're one of them, if you want to become one, there's links at the top of the video description as well, just below our item, the battery that we use, the transmitter and receiver package that we set up with. And in this case, we'll probably just link to the AR620 because that's what we would normally use, not necessarily the Lemon RX. Uh, but the Lemon RX receivers have been good in the past. It's just that we don't have like a strong relationship with the company that sells those right now and we would like to build one. So if you are a vendor of Lemon RX, let us know, we'd like to be an affiliate for you. And in the meantime, stay tuned, keep watching, click the bell for notifications so you know when new content's dropping on Brian Phillips RC. We literally have tons of stuff on the way here. Uh, we're trying to produce like three to four videos a week and it's, 
somewhat taxing, let's say, <laughs> but soon it's not going to be windy. It's going to be windy and rainy and windy and snowy mm -hmm. and blizzardy and crappy and dark and all these terrible things that we associate with winter. Although it is kind of cool. It helps you to appreciate what you have during summer when it gets to being winter time. But at the same time, we're gonna just long for summer again because that's when we can do lots of content for you guys here on YouTube. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being part of our little YouTube experience here. And uh, we hope that we've answered a few of your questions and hopefully not left you with a million new questions. If we did though, we apologize in advance. And then second of all, we wanna say we will try to answer them in the comments below. So definitely interact with us there. And if you need to reach us for business inquiries because you do Lemon RX, send us an email. It's in the about tab. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Come back for more here on Brown Phillips RC.